Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. Today's video is actually the last video of 2022 and we are ending with such a good video because we are going to be recapping all the books I've read in December. There is still some time for me to read a book if I somehow do end up reading a book. So if I do read any extra books, that will be in my end of the year recap, which will be coming next week, I believe, when you guys are watching this like the next Saturday, I'm pretty sure. Um, but yeah, it's December 30th and I have most of the books here. Um, I'm not currently reading anything, so I don't know if I will finish anything, but just in case, make sure you check out that video um, just to see all of the books that I read in total for the entire year. Anyways, I'm in my PJs because tonight I'm having like a little Christmas party in our PJs. My mom, I think my mom just called my name. Anyways, we are going to be talking about all the books I read, like I've said several times. I don't really remember how I ended it because my mom called my name. So yeah, I have eight, 18 books for this month. So I feel like I had a pretty good reading month. A lot of these are Christmassy books. So I will just go ahead and start with those. First Christmas book I have is All I Want for Christmas by Maggie Knox. This is my second novel that I've read from this author. I believe I rated this one three stars. I do have a reading vlog. A lot of these Christmassy books, I've read Christmas books for 24 hours. So if you're wanting to see like a more in-depth like review and things like that, I would suggest that. Or you can just watch it to watch maybe you're reading this book. But yeah, I think I rated it three stars. It was good, but again, like not the best thing. I think I realized this year that Christmas books are really fun to read, but they're not like great literature. I solely read them just for the enjoyment of reading a novel set around the Christmas time. It's kind of fun. Um, so I don't expect anything like fantastic. So three stars for this is like not a bad rating for like a Christmassy novel because they're all basically the same thing. That's the thing you have to like recognize when you're reading a Christmas novel, but Anyways, enough about my tangent. This is, yeah, all I want for Christmas. I think I really enjoyed this one because I liked the setting of it a little bit because it was like Nashville and you had two singers and I just liked that trope a lot. It was really cute. Yeah, just like Magic by Sarah Hogel. Again, this is the second novel I've read from this author. My first Christmas novel though from this one and I read it at three stars as well. Um, I thought it was cute. I thought it was a little bit different. I thought it kind of took a twist on um, Once Upon, no, what? What's it called? I keep on forgetting what the what that freaking movie is called, like a Christmas miracle or the movie where they're like every time a bell rings, an angel gets his wings. I'm pretty sure that's the movie. Um, which is funny because that movie was mentioned in almost every single Christmas novel I read I think this year, which is just kind of crazy. But anyways, this one is fun because it has a magical element to it, as it literally says. And I just thought it was fun. Again, three stars. I didn't I will say I didn't really like the main character. Uh, Betty. I, I just really didn't like her and she did get redeemed a little bit towards the end but overall like wasn't a favorite character of mine. We have Once Upon a December by Amy Reichardt. I rated this one at three stars as well. This one also had a magical element to it but it was a little bit different than Just Like Magic and I really liked the ending. I it was like gearing up towards something that I didn't completely agree with and then the twist that Reichardt did I did appreciate. Also, this is like such Christmassy vibes because her name is Astra Noel Snow. Like, are you are you kidding me right now? Yeah, again, three stars. We have Maybe Under the Mistletoe by Jenny Bayless. This is again the second novel I've read from this author. I rated this one three stars. It took me like 10 days to read, which for a book like this, that's a very, very long time. I will say this one is a little bit thicker. It's like 400 some pages. And I don't know, it just wasn't my cup of tea. It was kind of insta lovey and um, I don't know, just not my favorite. Like I said, rated it three stars as well, but compared to the other books, I think I like this one less, maybe. I, I would have to like think about these books really hard, um, but I did really like the representation that was in this novel and the mental health talks and infidelity. Like it deals with some like actual real issues, which I appreciated, but yeah, not my favorite out of all of them, but three stars. The last Christmas novel that I rated three stars was Susan Mallory's Home Sweet Christmas. This is actually the second novel in a series, which I didn't know, um, but it's one of those books where you don't have to read in order, like I read this fine. And yeah, this was actually my first Christmas novel I read this year, and it was a good start. It's a good transitionary piece from Thanksgiving into the Christmas time spirit. I really, really liked Cameron and Jake. I thought it was super cute. Also, I'm realizing I read so many books with the first name Jake in it now that I'm like 
thinking about this I, I will point out the other books where the main character's name is Jake but anyways um yeah we you, you get two romances in this which I thought was really cute and I also have a reading vlog for this one um if you want to go watch that next we're going to talk about my four star romance books so the first one I have is One Day in December by Josie Silver Josie Silver this is the second book I've read by this author and I think she is one of my new favorites the way that she just makes her book so emotional and makes you really think is insane this is kind of like a forbidden love I think it's like love at first sight but also forbidden love and you just have to read it <laughs> to understand it but it's over the course of 10 years and it's just I don't know it was amazing I really think Silver Josie Silver does a great job at writing these fantastic romances the other novel that I read from her is The Two Lives of Lydia Bird which I would also really recommend that one is five stars um, but yeah this was a good solid four star book next four star book I have is One Last Gift by Emily Stone I actually read Always in December that was the first book that I read of 2022 so it's awesome that I'm reading her second book in December um, but this one was great. She's another one where this this was more emotional and I honestly think that's why One Day in December and One Last Gift got that extra star compared to my other Christmas romances because I just thought it was good because you learn something other than just like a cutesy romance. Like it actually is discussing something crazy such as grief in this one. And yeah, I would 100% recommend it. It's a really good one. Very sweet. I loved it. His name is Jack. I know that's not Jake, but we did have another book with the first name Jack. So we have two books with Jack and I think three books with Jake. So I don't know, man, something's happening. But anyways, those are my four star um, Christmas books. I still have another four star um, book. I almost forgot about it. It's Love Light Farms, which I thought was super cute. I listened to it on audiobook, which I think if I had the physical copy, it would have been rated five stars. But this one was exactly what I wanted for like a friends to lover, fake dating situation, small town romance. I thought it was super cute. And I can't remember what his name is because now I'm on the same thing and I'm like, what was his name? Luca, so it doesn't matter. But anyways, I'm really wanting to continue on with the series. I think I wanna own Love Light Farms because it was such a good book. But that was my last four star Christmas romance. And then my only five star romance that I read Christmas theme was A Very Merry Bromance. This is the newest installment in the Bromance Book Club. And this is actually the only the second book I read where you don't really have to read it in order. But oh my gosh, I'm gonna be continuing the rest of the series because it is so good. I don't know what it is, but the whole trope of like a guy falling for the girl first or falling for the girl harder or like trying to get her trying to get her back just uh, it just i love it so much and so i rated this five stars i think i read it in i think i read it in like one sitting it was so good pick up the bromance book club series all of it next year like put that on the top of your tbr because it's so good at least in my opinion i love it so much i think that is all of our christmasy books i actually read a lot of christmas books so now i'm going to talk about the books that I'm actually going to talk about the ones that I don't physically have that way I don't forget but I did read Below Zero by Ali Hazelwood. I rated this five stars. Ali Hazelwood is a genius in my mind. I love it. I know it's like not the best writing or the best themes and it's kind of repetitive but I love it and I'm not gonna lie. I, I'm obsessed with it okay. So I would read it. This is the last published work that Hazelwood has I'm pretty sure. So I've read everything she has as of right now so this was actually my first book that i read in december and again read it in one sitting so good would, would 100 percent recommend and then i actually read another novella and this one was another five stars and then every morning the way home gets longer and longer and that is by frederick backman this was my first backman piece and i've heard so many great things about him i think the next novel i want to read by him is either anxious people or the the, na the man named ove something like that but Oh my gosh it just made, made you reflect and think and it was like 50 pages on an ebook and i was like this is fantastic how does he create such like a powerful message within like less than 100 pages insane would 100 percent recommend it if you guys really fast seen any books to like check off your goodreads reading goal read that i had two books on my tbr from november that i really wanted to read and that was the video where my friends controlled what i read 
for a week and so i have the last night in london by karen white my neighbor christy actually lit me this book so got to get this back to her finally um but yeah i rated this one four stars it was really cool i like the historical romance the twist was shocking i do think or maybe this was actually three stars not four stars i rated it three stars and i do think part of that is because i listened to it on audiobook and i think if i would have physically read this it would have been better typically that doesn't happen i know that happened twice this month where i listened to the audiobook of a book and i I think it took it down one star usually when i read audiobooks that doesn't really impact the reading experience but i just think for these the two particular books that i listened to this month i think they were meant to be like you need to read it on print because there's a lot going on um but yeah again rated three stars that is really cute i love books set in london or the uk so very fun and the second book that i wanted to finish um from that video was build your house around my body this is a vietnamese horror magical realism literature book that my friend ashley actually gifted to me when we were in the uk and yeah i rated it three stars this was a pretty good book i will say it was a little confusing but i thought it was so good and i feel like i learned a lot throughout it and yeah rated it like i said three stars and if you're looking for a vietnamese story pick this one up next is actually funny because i I actually just posted a video, I think the video before this one it was uploaded, about unwrapping my January TBR. And once I finished the the last night in London, I was like, I have no more books to read. I want to read like my physical TBR. So I just started reading the books for my January TBR. I actually read four out of the six. So sorry about that. That reading vlog will be coming soon because I only have two books left. But the first one I read was Credence by Penelope Douglas. Rated this two stars. If you want to like get my full thoughts and things like that you're just gonna have to wait for the reading vlog which like i said it should be coming soon because i'm almost already done with my january tbr um and it's still december so that's awesome but yeah this one was just i don't even know how to explain this i i don't know chapter 23 though i have i literally have nothing to say watch at your own risk read at your own risk um beware then to take um a break from the little taboo dark romance we have there i read the cartographers which i think this is considered a mystery slash thriller novel i'm not really sure it had some magical elements in it and i rated this one three stars as well I'm glad i read it but it's probably not a book i would pick up again i thought the story was gonna have a twist and I was expecting something and then it didn't happen and I was like this is the first time I read a mystery novel and it tells you exactly who the bad guy is and that's actually who the bad guy is like I thought there was gonna be some sort of like betrayal or something like that um so I don't know just like uh for me it was a lackluster ending I mean it was a good ending I liked how it ended but also the way that it ended Maybe I didn't like the way it ended. I didn't like the trope at the end. I'm not gonna say what happened specifically. Again, this will be in a reading vlog so you can see like me like actually talking about this one. But yeah, three stars. And then we went and read Birthday Girl by Penelope Douglas. I will say, I think this is the best Penelope Douglas book I read. I still rated it two stars because it's just so taboo. And just like, no, it's bad. But like, honestly, this one was the best out of the three that I've read, which I've read Credence, Plank 57, and then Birthday Girl. So if you're going to read a Penelope Douglas, I would probably recommend this one, but beware, there's still like power dynamics that the age gap is just not good. She's literally 19 dating a 38 year old. And I'm like, 19? That would be me, a 20 year old dating a 39 year old. My mom is 39. That's disgusting. I love you, mom. But that age difference, I'm not going to date someone. And my parents certainly wouldn't let me do that. And I don't know, just weird. But like, again, Penelope Douglas, I will say she knows how to write her certain scenes. If you know, you know. Two <laughs> stars for both of these. And the next book that I read for that same video is actually a summer book, which I was actually very nervous to read this because um, it's literally December. But oh my gosh, I rated this five stars. I finished it last night. I couldn't stop reading it. I love the way that Elin, or Ellen, I think it's pronounced Ellen. I just love the way she wrote the story. And his name is Jake. I forgot to mention that, but there's a Jake in this one and then a Jake in this one, which is just funny. More, which is great because I have three other books on my TBR from this author. And oh, I just loved it. I loved Mallory. I love Jake so much. Mallory was just 
such a likable character and the ending was so sad even though you knew exactly what was going to happen it was still very like upsetting to actually read it and yeah i would 100 percent recommend this book even if it's winter like it kind of took me out of the wintry vibes and i was just like oh my gosh but yeah i stayed up all night last night not really i went to bed at like 11 but i stayed up for several hours just to read this and i'm so glad i did and i'm pretty sure there's a novella and i'm like i have to read that because i want to know what else happens i'm pretty sure two characters get together in that novella and if you know you know but yeah if if you're gonna read a book out of the four of these which i will again talk about this in my reading blog read 28 summers it's it's so freaking good the only complaint i have is that it's written in third person not that much of a fan of that type of writing style but also it's so good that is all of the books that i read besides one i'm actually still currently reading it and i am going to include it in this wrap up because it is a book that i've been reading literally all year long and that is saber um living abundantly where you are as you are it is a devotional i've read it every single morning and yeah, I'm reading it five stars. I'm. It's kind of hard to rate a devotional anything less than five stars unless you really hate it. It's hard because <laughs> some of the devotions were like for mothers or wives and I was like, I am neither of those things, but I will continue reading it. And yeah, I just really appreciated it. This one is called Saber because she also includes recipes. So if you guys are looking for a devotion, um, here you go. But yeah, five stars, love it. I'll finish this tomorrow morning and that's the last book of 2022. Yeah, again, like I said, I might read another book in the two days that we have left of 2022. I'm not sure. So if you just want to be extra careful, if I do, you should go ahead and subscribe so you can watch my 2022 book wrap up. I actually have part one up already on my channel if you want to watch that. It was done in July, I'm pretty sure. So it should have the first year or the first half of the year's book recap in that. But yeah, that's going to be the end. Thank you guys so much for following me or for watching this i am at 850s ish sub subscribers and i'm just so excited my goal for 2023 is to hit 1000 subscribers so fingers crossed for that i'm very excited and so grateful for what an amazing year we've had um yeah and i will talk to you guys next time peace and love bye guys